Hello. What you are looking at here is a 2000 model, Johnson 50 horsepower. Uh, it's a pretty nice outboard. At least it would be if it had all of its appendages. We are missing the lower. This thing was advertised as, I believe the title was, Johnson Outboard with Unrepairable Lower Unit. Now that, that piqued my interest. Like, what could possibly be wrong where it has an unrepairable lower unit? Somebody go in there and weld the gears together? So I naturally talked to the guy and got the story. He said he was out on his pontoon boat down on Lake Havasu. All of a sudden, came to an abrupt halt. Couldn't figure out why, took it to the shop. Shop said, oh, you sucked up so much fishing line, completely ruined the lower unit. Unrepairable. The guy was like, well, all right, I was thinking about buying a uh, four-stroke anyway, so what do you got? And then they offered him a, a four-stroke they had for sale. And that's the direction he took. So he assumed, uh, took the shop's word for it, and the lower unit could not be repaired. Got himself a new four-stroke for it, and put this one up for sale. Now me and him got to talking. I don't want to get the story. But you know, well, where... He had a picture of just the motor. I was like, where's the lower unit? So now it's at the boat shop. He's all like, they took the, the engine off. I have that here. I was like, well, what about all the controls and everything? He's like, well, those are at the boat shop too. I, okay, well, I mean, is all that available? He's like, yeah, I'll call him, tell him to save it all, and then uh, we can meet up and you can get all that stuff. I said, okay, perfect. He said, but keep in mind, lower unit's not repairable. Again, I asked, like, what? Yeah, what, what's the story there? I mean, how can it not be fixed? And he said, well, yeah, that, that was a little weird to me, too. I asked him, like, the shop didn't want it? And he's like, oh, no, they did. They just aren't getting it. So I think, he, I think he understood that maybe they were trying to get a motor out of him and then fix it and sell it themselves and sell him the motor in the process. And he was just going to eliminate that whole, uh, you're getting the old one thing. Better they didn't offer him much and he wanted more for it. I don't know. But either way, the outboard is taken apart. We are going to try to fix it. I'm currently going through this box of stuff that I got with it. Find the parts. There they are. Beautiful bag. And in here we got a bunch of little random things. We have a tachometer. It's like two battery hold down things, which is what that would be. Uh, I got some random bolts here. I'm guessing those are lower unit. All right, here is the engine. We still have the VRO pump installed. Starter is here, but they had removed it. I'm guessing they removed it to get to all of the wiring and connections and stuff, rather than just pulling off a lower cowl. I do that too. At least I did, now I just pull off a lower cowl. Um, power trim and tilt, motor has it disconnected. Probably just to ease access to the wiring. When it was disconnected, they decided to cut the white wire for the trim unit sender. No big deal. Uh, terminal cover is broken off. At least the terminal block is broken. Uh, that's the pin for the lower unit. I snaked that off another... I forget where I got it, but I've been stuffing parts in there just as I need them. I was also missing this guy. I found one. Put it on there. Uh, this side of the motor looks pretty good. Check this out. You hear the motor sucking air in from the reeds? There's the bottom carb. There's the top carb. Nice, good, healthy motor. Now, this motor came on the guy's pontoon boat, he says. Pontoon boat had an hour gauge. Hour gauge says 611 hours. So I'm going to guess that this motor has 611 hours on it. Uh, the only, only thing about that is this gauge looks... Uh, much, much older than 2000, but I could be wrong. It looks more like, you know, 80s gauge to me, but I don't know. Let's assume the motor has 600 hours on it, which isn't bad. All right, bag of parts. We have the reverse gear. 
with seemingly no damage. I've got some junk in there, but... Nope. So at a glance here, it seems to be kind of working. So here is my expert analysis. The pinion gear should not look like that. It is pretty, uh, pretty worn. Now, surprisingly though, the forward gear has almost really no noticeable wear at all. I mean, yeah, it's dirty, but I mean, we could wash it probably. You know, really what probably happened, it was probably rebuilt at some point in its life already with just some new gears. Probably wasn't shimmed correctly, causing uh, premature pinion wear. With the added stress of, of his monster roll of fishing line, they probably just did it in for it. So is it repairable? Absolutely. Um, forward, the forward gear and pinion, you should change them both at the same time. In fact, you can't only buy the pinion or the forward gear, you need to buy them both. So gear set, basically, check the bearings, probably fine, but check if replace them maybe you know you, you could get this thing going again it's it's not impossible probably cost a thousand bucks in parts and then dealer labor probably another thousand given out boat shops charged so two grand you probably could have got this thing going or you could pick up a used gear case throw it in there and call it a day um, there's, there's other ways to do it I don't know if buying another outboard was the uh, the cure but at least it brings us this video for some entertainment and other engine to play with so Need a lower. I uh, found one recently, so let's uh, transition over to that footage. This is the lower unit removed from a 1993 48 horsepower. Uh, judging by the rubber, it's uh, it's gonna have problems. But I don't know. But as is, so we're gonna see what condition it's in. It's just pouring out of there. Uh, no water though. And I haven't seen any chunks of metal, so good sign so far. Okay, lower is drained with no water and metal shavings coming out. So that's a good sign. Gonna pressure test it. Via my pressure tester. See if it holds pressure for a while. And it says, if it does, we will continue on with our revival. So I'll let it sit there for a while, go do some other stuff, and see if it drops. Well, after fiddling with the shift rod, the drive shaft, and the prop shaft, it hasn't dropped at all. So don't think we need to reseal this gear case. Therefore, I'm not going to. I'm going to continue on with the water pump, paint it, clean it up a bit, and, well, ideally you clean it up before you paint it, but you know what I mean. Just clean it up, paint it, and uh, reinstall. The well, water kit is done. Be straightforward. 
I do think the new design of the kit is much better than the old one. But I think it costs too much too, but it works. All right, I removed the bolts holding the lower cowling on. There's two in the back, one in the middle, one in the front. I'm gonna slide out. That's pretty, pretty nasty inside of there. I'll wash those. Now the other side, well, uh, not in there. All right, hold on. The other side has the tilt trim switch here. So that's gotta be disconnected before the cowling comes off. But also, I'm missing the pins that go in for the shift and throttle cables. Most of the time those get dropped inside of there and good luck getting them back out. So I'm hoping I find them when I remove this. That looks like a starter bolt maybe. Some kind of bolt, but down here, in the nastiness, I got a pin and I got one of the little retaining clips that are not on the floor. Right. This thing is kind of a nasty mess. So we have another bolt that I said might be the starter bolt. It is, it's the top one in the back. So it's uh, good to have all those again. I might have put that in a little wrong. All right, starter is out, it's good for us. It means we can access more things. So we still have the VRO pump. At some point I'll probably be removing that. But for right now, I want to get I want to get the lower on and I need that shift pin which goes in that hole right there. And as predicted, it's not there, which is why I have the spare that I picked up. When this thing died, I doubt they uh, drained the fuel out of it first. So I'm going to take a shot in the dark. I'd say their carburetors are full of old gas and oil. So those should probably be cleaned before it goes back together. And as well, while the starter is off, that's pretty much the easiest time. So I'm gonna pop the cover off, pop the starter off, clean these parts probably while I'm here. And basically open up one of the carburetors each at a time and clean them out before we go back on. There's some debate here if I wanted to try to save the fuel lines or not. Which I do kind of want to because they seem okay. At least the primer lines. The thing is if I break something it's not really worth the cost of the fuel lines. Like that it should be pulled out of there but that's okay. Anyway if I break something it's not worth the cost of the fuel lines for whatever I need to replace. Flathead. Remove the top arm out of the plastic, which broke everywhere. It's kind of what I expected, to be honest, but not a big deal. Well, obviously they're a little cleaner than I figured they'd be. Uh, the only thing I see wrong is the float. You see how it's not even close to being level? Well, it should be. 
that'll give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. That should be level with this, so we can put our gauge here and we can see where we're supposed to be. So we should be sitting right there. That's where we are. So we're not even close to being where that thing's supposed to be. That's a little weird. How well did that run, you know? So anyway, I just gotta, all you really gotta do is bend the arm back, just like so. Yep. And that is where we're supposed to be. So that is, uh, like I said, that's a little weird. But also, you don't need the gauge, you can just look. I mean, on the camera here. Let me see if I can use the built-in level on the tripod. Yeah, my hand's not level. Anyway, looking at it through the phone screen, it looks like it's still going down. Looking at it in person, it might still be going down. Let me fix that again. That's a little better. Top of the float, parallel with the car body. Now we're okay. We weren't before. A little weird. Do I need to clean this thing out? Probably not. It's probably fine. But do I really want to check? That answer is no. I'm going to give it, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes in a little uh, fluid cleaner bowl here. I'll take it out, check the other carburetor. And uh, if we need to do anything, we'll do it. So while we're waiting, I suppose I can get this VRO off of here. Um, is there anything wrong with the VRO? Probably not. They kind of get a bad rep even though they shouldn't. Um, the reason I don't like them is because I don't want to run the oil tank. Every time I've pulled an outboard off of a, an old boat and it still has a VRO hooked up, the oil tank is falling apart, deteriorated. But mind you, we're on the west coast here, sun is a problem for plastic, so it just falls apart. Anyway, so these VRO tanks are just disgusting messes. You know, you touch them and your, your finger goes through the side of them and then, now you're covered in oil. And they just go everywhere, they're just gross. They take up more room in the boat. And since I like small little boats, kind of, it's not something I want. mentioned previously I'm trying to cheap out and not replace the fuel lines however you can see this one is nearly worn through I don't know starter something was rubbing there and you can see the crease on the back here um, yeah that thing is nearly done for anyway a few more trips out in the Sun and this thing probably would have been a fuel leak so cheaping out is one thing I love cheaping out and stuff but you know that's uh, I'm glad I caught that now I have no, uh, no quarrels about changing the fuel lines because it needs it. So I'm going to clean up the bottom everything here because it's all sticky and disgusting. So while the carburetor cleans itself out, it'll give me something to do. All you got to do is reactivate the grease via some any type of spray on fluid. Let it sit in, sit in for a second. That'll take the stickiness off change it into something you can clean again all right so that's that's doing something so I'll let it sit wipe it off and then come in with some soapy detergenty stuff and that should get the bottom looking halfway decent again All right, this broken cover has been bugging me. So while I 
wait for the carb to soak, I will swap this out. Okay, bottom carburetor is off. Let's see what we find. So this carburetor is actually good. I mean, that's that's perfect right there. No troubles at all. All right, as mentioned previously, the RO pump is not staying. So I'm gonna find the appropriate size socket. Pull this off of here. Little plunger fitting thing. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. All right. What are my options? Pipe wrench. Oh, there we go. All right, I have these plugs. That's what they look like. There's the part number. Ah. All right, got a Allen wrench. I had my sealant a second ago, it's gone now, it figures. Put some of your favorite sealant on the threads. I'm going to be using this Permatex 2 stuff. So uh, years ago, I bought some stuff from some guy who just travels around the country. He's retired, him and his wife, and they used to go to a lot of the uh, outboard little swap meet meetup things. And I guess he would just have and sell and collect and trade stuff. Uh, in that, I got a box. That box was labeled exactly like this one from, looks like, looks like Jenny, but it might be Jerry. I don't know. Pos Good Test Pump. Now, I don't know if that's pass, like pass the test, it's a good test pump, or if that's possibly good test pump. I don't know. In those same boxes were these two. Uh, this one we can't use. It has the external little pressure line, which probably could have hooked up to that pulse line, but we're not using that one. Uh, then we have this one, which would work fine. It uses the rear port for pressure. The problem is it's caked in gunk, like you can see dirt inside of there so not the kind of thing I'm gonna be running through my new uh, little outboard here so I'm gonna take these POS good test pumps out of here and just get something good all right I don't want to use this one I really like this one because it is brand new but I think uh, that would probably be the one we should use all things considered although I do have this one why don't I want to put a new one on, you ask? Well, I don't know if this thing's even going to run. I haven't done a compression check. I don't know if the ignition's going to start. And uh, I don't know if the replacement lower unit's pinion is, is as worn as the one we just took out. So there, there's a lot of ifs here. I mean, it looks looks nice on the inside. We can see if you can see it. I don't know, maybe I can go to the hardware store and get a new O-ring. So I was wiping the gunk off of the uh, fitting here and see this little smudging? Ran my finger across it. 
Don't really plan on doing that again, so I'll figure I'll deburr it since the factory can't. Get this guy on here. Nice, good looking fuel pump for a nice, good looking outboard. I found an O-ring that fits in here just beautifully at the hardware store. Just perfect. And that's when I discovered that my little uh, housing is cracked. So I need a new housing. So I went to my little pile of, you know, random parts, found another housing. It's cracked too. Not as bad as the other one, but it's still cracked. Fuel's gonna get inside of there. Uh, the screw may seal it off, it may not, probably not. So I did find one that wasn't cracked. However, it's the older style that uses an actual big round gasket on it, not the lower ring, so we can't use that one either. So that uh, kind of sucks. Now, according to the old interwebs here, new one, 1249, so it's not, uh, they're not necessarily expensive. I don't want to use my new fuel pump on this motor. I want to use it for my uh, pontoon boat. But I have no problem robbing the cap off of it, so. Order new cap and screw. Actually, I'll just get the cap. I'll use the, uh, take the screw out and take the gasket out, leave them in the box. Order a new cap and when it gets here, I'll just throw it in that box and it should be there waiting for me when the time comes. So that is how I'm temporarily solving that problem. A little silly, I know. That new O-ring is on our probably good fuel pump. Yeah, it feels good. Fuel pump is on installed. Then unplug the primer here. We're going to pop it out, change the main fuel line. These screws feel a little weird. They shouldn't, the bottom one here shouldn't be that tight at all. Might be cross-threaded or something. And it also looks like it's full of some kind of sealant. So that's a little, a little strange. Hit this with a quarter twenty tap. Make sure that we don't have any problems here. All right, all I really need to do here is change out the main fuel line that feeds it. All right, just so you know, this is a 5 30 seconds fuel line. Gonna make it the same length, plus just a pinch if I need it. Engine powered up here. We can use the tilt and trim. All right, blue and red mean sky.
So who knows what was used inside of here, given how that solenoid came off. I don't really want to trust the uh, lower hardware either, so I'll clean all that out. So what I'm going to do here is take the new grommet I have for the top shift rod. Uh, well, you saw the one I put down here. This one is the one for the top. That was the lower cowling. I'm going to put it where the shift rod is going to come out in hopes that it doesn't fall, which it will. No doubt about that. I don't know. Maybe I'll... Put the lower in there, hold it, slip it on, and then push in the rest of the way. I don't know, it's not going to be fun. Uh, gasket sealing NTC's compound is going on to the bolts. I'm going to put it on one of the lower bolts first. And then that's just, you know, one random bolt. And I'm going to put it on the long bolt too. Just so whichever bolt happens to be handier that I grab to hold this in there for me. It'll already be ready to go. Okay. I have my parts ready to go. The two bolts I spoke of and the grommet. The slider in there. Ah. Hold it. Slide in the grommet. Hope it makes it through the first one. Perfect. Yeah. All right. First grommet is in. Didn't move. there all right plan here is to hopefully guide that over while the lower goes up perfect kind of wondering if I use the wrong color I mean, it's not that far off. In person, on the camera, it looks just ridiculous. But in person, it doesn't look that bad. You want to get all the bolts in and started because before you tighten any down, because it takes a little bit of wiggling to make sure they're all going to line right. Shift rod hole lines up just perfectly, and it's already coated in grease, so that's good because it's probably never going to rust in there on me. carburetor is back from its cleaning process good and dry usually I would have changed the gaskets here but they uh, they don't look deformed at all or punched or any real damage you know usually you would see the indent of the carburetor on the gasket and you don't even see that so the gaskets are still in good usable shape I'd say I like how at the start of this, this bench was all clean and clutter-free. Here we are towards the end, and it's full of junk. Just kind of how it goes.
All right, top carburetor is installed. Gotta get this old clip out of here. Which might be a little hard to do. Pulls out from the broken side. There we go. We got our new used replacement. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. And they look like they're operating together. I didn't mess with any settings or anything, so we should be good. Now for the primer lines, the little guys, there's enough there to play with to where I can just trim off what I sliced and reinstall. All right, I just removed the fuel pump manifold off of the VRO pump. Now, originally it was sticking upwards because the VRO pump pumps it in like so. But since we're using the uh, mechanical fuel pump, it's gonna be facing downward. So all this really does is take the fuel out from the fuel pump and fit it into the uh, carburetor, the primer, and the bottom carburetor. So they simply slip on. Ran the fuel pump line under the starter through here and into the manifold. Let's tuck that thing out of the way. Yeah, perfect. Actually, I need to put a zip tie there, so that's coming back. Well, it probably has one bend left in it before it breaks anyway. All right, let's get this. Cover back on. Now we need to hook up the line for a little vent goes under here. I don't know why this thing is so long, but whatever. Maybe it's its own little P-trap. I don't know. Kind of weird. So the lower cowling seal gasket that was on here, the thing is just disgusting and falling apart. I have another one uh, from an engine I ripped apart many years ago. The thing is, it is rock hard, so do I want the one that's falling apart or the one that ain't any good? Yeah, either way, I'm just going to use this one. I'll re maybe I'll keep an eye out for a new one or a replacement or something, but for now, this will be fine. Yeah, that'll work. Let's get the lower cowl back on. Now the lower shift rod grommet. <laughs> almost where it needed to go and now it's in its spot so now I can slide in the other side um, the battery cables I had on here uh, those are some battery cables that came off some outboard somebody cut them off so they're really short so I crimped on a new end and I've been using them for my bench test battery cables they're too short for anything though. So putting on a, another set of battery cables here while I have the 
lower cowling off, it uh, makes it a lot easier to get to them, so might as well just leave these on here. More uh, permanent stall. All right, the cable should be out of the way. So I should be able to slide the other half right back in there. All right, now for the rubber grommets. Power trim and tilt line goes to the bottom usually. And the rest doesn't really matter. Especially since we don't have them all right now. Um, don't have cables, but I don't want to lose the grommet. Slide it in there anyway. All right. Whenever I remove the VRO pump on one of these, I like to change out the fuel fitting so it doesn't have the VRO plug on it. it makes it look like it's, you know, it is the way it's supposed to be, even though it's not. Top off, I mean, it puts them in there because they're not in there right now. All right, fluid is just shot out of the vent, so I'm finally done. This long, tedious process. I don't know, it's probably three to five minutes of pumping. You know, you're getting probably a quarter of an ounce per pump. It takes forever. Well, the only thing left to do now really is see if it'll start. I mean, yeah, we could do a compression and spark check, but no, let's, uh, let's see if it'll start. Anyway, getting this thing into that tank is no easy process with the engine hoist. I have an adapter that'll take our newer plug and plug it into a red harness, which is going the wrong way. Crap. Okay, this one takes the newer controls and turns it into a red plug, not the red plug into the new control, so it's backwards. All right, now we're in business. All right, big one. Yeah, I don't really need to plug that in, but we're gonna and the power trim tilts there if you like. All right, plug the other end in. Let's see what kind of functions we have. Choke. Start, we're good. Get the water a flowing. That sounds good. Have some gas. Now it's in the tank, hooked up to the bus. I don't want to waste that much water filling that thing all the way up for this. But I don't want to lose the water, so. Alright, pumping her up. Fuel isn't squirting everywhere yet, so I guess our hardware store O ring is working. See any fuel leaks? Primer's hard. Choke. And see if it starts. Pretty good. Forgot about the throttle being just had to be done by hand. We're all the way low now. So if it starts at low, we're good. Let's give it a hair throttle. I turned it off so we can see well. Battery might be a little weak for this too.
fill up a little bit, at least to cover where the prop should be. All right, I've decided to put a propeller on it. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of my uh, hose here. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Then I got water shooting up the relief holes now. Uh, my only quarrel with it is it seems to be shaking a little more than it should. A lot of that, I think, is the tank. This stand isn't really attached very well. It just kind of balances there. So I don't know if that's necessarily an issue. The other issue is we have a little bit of water puddling up here. See it? So I need to pop that fitting out of there, put some little goop in there, and put it back in. Otherwise, the fuel pump seems like it's doing its job at idle anyway. So I'm going to disconnect the gas, let it run itself out. You know, I suppose when the uh, shop said it's an unrepairable lower unit, what they probably meant was we're not fixing this lower unit. Cost too much. May not be worth it. Because at the end of the day, you know, realistically, I did the same thing. I looked at it and said, I ain't fixing this. We just replaced it. And perhaps that's uh, that was their uh, thought process as well. I think the shop probably made the right call. See, we can't fix this thing. Cost too much. But then again, I mean, what was cheaper, fixing this one or buying a new one? So, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully, it's not too long of a video. I'll see y'all later.